Hi, I'm Erin. Thank you so much for joining me today for a deep stretch yoga class. So we're gonna do very little on our feet, maybe a couple sun salutations, but not even very many. And um, our goal in this deep stretch class is obviously to open the body, um, to elongate the muscles, and the most important part of making this happen is holding our postures. So we'll be holding the postures uh, for anywhere between seven and 10 breaths. And I will guide you into the posture and then we'll just hold it and breathe together. So today we're actually gonna start in a posture that's a little bit intense, but um, really good, just kind of starting from the ground up called toes pose. So it's a nice stretch for the bottoms of our feet and our toes and um, to come into this pose. So if you do have any feet or ankle issues, I do not recommend taking this pose or maybe taking it but not holding it very long. It does get super intense. So while we hold toes pose, we're gonna do some breathing. If toes pose is not accessible to you, take a seated position or you can come onto your shins and sit like this. And again, if that's too much, then just come into a seated position. So for toes pose, we're actually gonna tuck the toes, all 10 toes under, and we're gonna spread the toes. So just take your hands to assist you and spread your toes so that you can see a little bit of mat between each toe. So you just want contact with all the toes on the mat, and then you're gonna sit all of your weight back onto your heels. So like I said, it's pretty intense. If you need to come out of the posture at any time and want to come back into it, just back the hips off the heels, maybe even shake out the feet. All right, so go ahead and get yourself into position in toes pose. And like all poses, we want to find this long straight spine. So you're going to want to sit up nice and tall, reach through the crown of the head, roll the shoulders away from the ears. You can rest the palms face down on the thighs or face up. And then if you're comfortable, close your eyes. So right away, you're gonna start feeling your feet. You're gonna start feeling your toes. This is really healing and good for your toes. It's a big stretch. We don't do it often. This is especially great for runners um, to stretch out those feet. So let's start to welcome the breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Close the lips, exhale through the nose. Find a constriction to the back of the throat, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Ujjayi pranayama. Really great breath right now because I know it's getting intense. I know it's intense for me. Again, if you need to back off, feel free to back off. Give your toes a break. If you can hold it for a few more breaths, let's just add the arms. So inhale, both arms up overhead. Exhale, release hands to the floor. Two more, inhale, both arms up overhead. Exhale, release hands to the floor. One more, inhale, both arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to the floor. All right. If you're feeling the way I'm feeling, let's get off those toes. Woo. All right, just feel the blood rush back into the joints. Come into a tabletop position and just start to uh, flutter the feet on the floor. Bang them out. <laughs> get that blood rushing back into the feet and the toes. And then we're just gonna take a um, counter stretch and we're gonna stretch out the ankles so again if you have feet or ankle issues 
You might want to not want to take this pose, but feel it out, back off when you need to. You're gonna bring the hips back to the heels. You can use your hands for assistance and start to just rock back. So we're getting a nice stretch to the fronts of the ankles, the tops of the feet. If you feel any tweakiness, just back off. Good, and then we'll come back onto the knees and then come back into tabletop position. All right, so from here, we're gonna take Anahatasana or melting heart pose or puppy pose. So we're gonna keep the hips right over the knees and we're gonna start to walk the hands forward and a little bit wider than shoulder distance apart. So keep the hips over the knees instead of pressing them back and start to melt the heart toward the floor. Forehead comes toward the floor. Breathe here. Two more, inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. And then come back up into tabletop position. Take the wrist right back underneath the shoulders. Let's take some cat cows warming up the spine. So inhale, release belly toward the floor, tailbone and crown of the head lifts. Exhale, round. Draw the tailbone down, gaze comes toward navel center. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Keep going. Inhale. Complete the exhale. Come back to tabletop position. Let's take a twist. So we'll keep the hips right over the knees. Inhale, right arm high. Exhale, right arm behind the left. Come on to right shoulder and right ear. Inhale. Exhale. Two more on your own. Exhale. Inhale, unwind. Let's take a half bind. So take that right hand toward the left hip. Maybe take hold of the shirt or the pants and then roll the shoulder open. And then if it feels good on the neck, go ahead and gently release the left ear toward the left shoulder. Only if this is not too much strain. For me, it feels good, but if that feels like too much, just back off and keep the head in line with the spine. Inhale, extend. Exhale, release. <laughs> Inhale, left arm high. Exhale, twist. Left arm behind the right. Come on to left shoulder and left ear. Inhale. Exhale, at your own pace, of course. Inhale, exhale, on your own, two more, or maybe it's a couple more. If my breath goes at a different pace than yours, no worries, and just continue to breathe. Don't force it or rush it. And exhale. Inhale, unwind. 
and then take the half bind. So left hand is gonna come toward the right hip. You can take hold of the shirt, rest the hand on the back, maybe reach around for the hip, and then roll the shoulder open, and then option if it feels good for the neck, gently and slowly release the right ear toward the right shoulder. Oh, I got a little pop in my neck. That feels good. Should feel a nice stretch along the left side of your neck. And again, if this doesn't feel comfortable on the neck, keep the head in line with the spine. Unwind and release. Let's come into downward facing dog. Tuck the toes under. Lift the hips high up and back. Release the heels toward the mat. And start to find a little movement here in downward facing dog. Knees can be really bent. We can press the heels toward the floor. And if downward facing dog is too much, too big of a stretch on the hamstrings, you can take child's pose. Hips to heels, extend the arms long. Wherever we are, let's hold for three more breaths. So I invite you in this deep stretch class, well, I invite you in all classes to really explore in your own body. So if something doesn't work, don't do it. And just feel into the pose. So if you need a little different variation in your body, take it and just move slowly so you can really feel what's happening, ask your body for what it needs and answer it. Let's look toward the hands and walk the feet to the front of the mat or toward the hands. You can take just little steps, bend the knees as much as needed. And then when we get toward the hands, rest the torso on the thighs and take opposite hand toward opposite elbow and just dangle here. You can find a little swaying motion if that feels good or you can just find stillness here. So in this posture, the weight of the head is providing a little traction for the spine. So we're more focused on our back and our spine than we are on our hamstrings. So bend the legs as much as needed to find that length. If you even want a little bit more elongation in the neck, a little more traction, you can take the hands and interlace the fingers at the back of the head. And you'll just squeeze the palms of the hands in toward the ears. And again, then just relax the arms. So you've got a little added weight coming into the head. Wobble the head side to side. Maybe bend and straighten the legs. Let's release the hands to the floor. And come up to a halfway lift, so legs bent or working towards straight. Hands are on the blocks, on the shins, or on the thighs, but we want a supported halfway lift. So hands should be in contact with something. Working toward a flat spine, shoulders away from the ears. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, let's rise all the way up to standing. Reach those arms off to the side. Come up to tall mountain. Exhale, cactus the arms, pull the elbows down, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Inhale, tall mountain. And exhale, forward fold. So from here, let's heel toe the feet out to the edge of the mat. 
and then bring the toes off to an angle. And on the next inhale, with soft knees or straight legs, we're gonna rise all the way up. Connect the palms above the head and then exhale, come into a mini squat. So bend the knees, bring the hands to the heart. Inhale, sweep those arms all the way up overhead. And on the exhale, we're gonna sweep the arms off to the side. Palms are gonna face up at first, and then we're gonna hinge at the hips and the palms are gonna face down to the earth. And again, legs can be straight or you can have a soft bend in the knees. We're gonna connect the palms above the crown of the head, straight out in front, taking a little spinal strength and shoulder strength. And then from here, we're just gonna do a, just a body flop, a gentle release. And then if your legs are straight, I do recommend just taking a soft bend to the knees and just release. Tops of the hands can rest to the floor. You can take palms of the hands to the floor. Just hang here. Exhale. And then let's rise all the way back up again. So sweep the arms off to the side, inhale. Connect the palms up above the head. Exhale, little squat, hands to heart center. Sweep the arms, inhale all the way up. And then exhale, sweep the arms off to the side. Palms are gonna face up at first and then you're gonna flip the palms as you hinge at the hips. Torso comes parallel to the floor. Again, soft bend is optional in the knees. Sweep the arms in front of the head and exhale, release. And take a soft bend to the knees and just dangle here. We're just gonna take one more. So inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring hands to heart center. A little squat here. It's not a deep one, just bending the legs. Inhale up overhead. And then exhale, sweep the arms off to the side. Hinge at the hips, palms face up, and then they flip to face the earth when the torso comes parallel. Inhale, arms, uh, palms connect above the crown of the head. And then exhale, release. Keep the hands planted where they are. Step back, plank pose. Modification for plank pose is to release the knees to the floor. We're just gonna hold here for one more inhale and then exhale, slowly lower down onto the floor. Keep those elbows in. Inhale, peel the chest off the floor for cobra pose. Exhale, release. Press the hands, or take the hands back about an inch by the ribs. Inhale, lift a little bit higher. Maybe the belly button comes off the floor. Mid lift cobra. Exhale, release. And if that's too much, just stay with low lift cobra. Take the hands back another inch. Inhale, high cobra. And keep a soft bend in the elbows. Just start to lift the chin off the chest. Opening through the front side of the body. Little back bend here. Kind of a big back bend actually. And then lower all the way down. Let's bring the hands back underneath the shoulders. Bring the knees wide, toes to touch. Press back, child's pose. Release the forehead toward the mat. Breathe here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's press back to down dog in preparation for a lunge. So if you don't wanna press back to down dog, you can come from tabletop and just take your right foot forward. If you're in downward facing dog, you can sweep the right leg up, get a nice stretch here and three legged dog, and then sweep the leg through. However you wanna get into it is just fine. We're gonna release that back knee to the floor and we're gonna heel toe the right foot out to the edge of the mat. 
Okay, take the left hand to the floor. Take your right toes to about a 45 degree angle. And then take that right hand to the right knee and start to twist open. So from here, you can take those, the back toes flat to the floor, keep the toes tucked. If this is too much on the knee, you can put a blanket under the knee or roll your mat and get extra cushion. And then option here to roll onto the right outer edge of the right foot. And again, gently and slowly press that right knee open. So when it feels like it's too much, just back off. But we do want a nice opening in the glute, the hip, the pelvis, the hip flexor, lots going on here. So I just invite you to turn in, maybe close the eyes if you feel balanced and comfortable. And move the body. So if you wanna take back off a little bit, go deeper, bring the foot flat to the floor. Three more breaths. big stretch. All right, so heel toe your foot back to the center of your mat so it's in line with your hip. Keep that back knee on the floor and again foot flat or toes tucked, whatever feels more stable for you. And then we're going to bring both hands onto the knee. Interlace the fingers, press the hands onto the knee and start to work the shoulders over the hips. Okay, so that could be feel like a lot in the body, we're just working in that direction. So start to press into the hands, start to press the shoulders back, you're gonna feel a big stretch in your left quad and your left hip flexor. This is feeling really intense on my left hip, so I'm just deepening my breath. But if it's painful, you back off. But if it's intense, you breathe. This is how we open up the body. Last breath. Wow, okay, bring the hands back to the floor. We're gonna bring the right leg, the front leg into um, basically like pigeon pose. So we're working that shin parallel to the front of the mat. This is too much, we bring the shin or the heel a little bit closer in. All right, and instead of pigeon pose, we're gonna take deer pose so we're gonna to start to draw the left leg forward. The left knee is gonna to come toward the right heel and the left shin is going to work toward parallel with the side of the mat. So we have shin parallel to the front of the mat, shin parallel to the side of the mat. We want both toes flexed back toward both knees. Okay, and from here, we're gonna just take it into a twist, not for very long. Bring that left hand to the right knee, right hand out behind. Just open through the throat and chest. Keep those shoulders right over those hips. And then unwind. We're gonna take it into a forward fold. So again, this is a pretty uh, big hip stretch in both hips, internally and externally. So we're gonna come into a forward fold, stop where it feels like enough. So maybe we're up here on the hands, that's great. This feels like a lot, good. You're getting a nice stretch.
two more breaths. If we're folded forward or just hinged forward, come all the way back up. Bring that left leg in. Good. And we're going to cross that left, we're going to bring the right knee toward the center of the mat. Cross the left knee over the right. Okay, so we're working to, toward Gomukhasana or cow face pose. So we're working the knees stacked and the shins toward parallel with the side or front of your mat. If you're not there yet, if your knees look like this, or your feet are all the way back here, that's fine, okay? Just feel that stretch. We're gonna take the right arm up and over. You can take the left hand onto the right elbow, or you can hold onto your shirt, the back of your shirt with your right hand. Take the left hand behind and hold onto the shirt, or you can connect the fingertips. Hold here, inhale, exhale. Do not sacrifice the alignment of the spine for the bind. So if you got the bind and you're all hunched over like this, back off on the bind so you can stay tall. Okay, last couple breaths. If you want a forward fold, or at any time if you want a forward fold, that's great. It just increases the stretch in the outer left hip and glute. If you're folded forward, start to back off the fold, release the arms, and then let's just take a counter stretch. So bring that left arm across the body, take hold of the back of the elbow with the right arm, lower the shoulder away from the ear. Good. And then we'll just counter pose, open up the hips. So you're gonna bring your left knee toward your right heel, right hand out behind, and start to lift and open through the hips. Arm reaches up, maybe back. Maybe we release the head toward the floor. release. We're going to bring both legs out in front of us. We're going to take a seated forward fold first. So inhale, both arms up overhead. Exhale, start hinging at the hips. So we can take, even if this is as far as we can go, we have options. We can take the hands behind the hips for support and just start working the hands closer as we fold. If it's comfortable, we can take the hands to the thighs or the mat in front of us, the shins, the calves, the ankles, the feet, the toes. And just work toward a nice long spine. We're reaching the forehead toward the toes. Shoulders are away from the ears and we're breathing. Inhale. Exhale. So let the breath guide you deeper into the pose. And again, if you're comfortable, close your eyes as you hold the pose. Breathe nice and deep all the way down into the belly. So try and avoid shallow chest breathing. And again, if you get to that point in your breath, just back off the pose a little bit. So you really want the breath flowing as we hold the pose. That's the best way to let the body gently open up.
slowly release from the fold wherever you're at. We're gonna come onto the right forearm behind us. We're gonna start to guide the left leg across the right. It's gonna come onto the floor. And then we're gonna bend the bottom leg, which is our right leg, and take the foot with the hand. We're gonna start to press the foot into the hand, guide it back behind us, open the chest. And then if it's comfortable, we can come all the way down onto our shoulder, roll onto our back. We still have hold of that bottom foot and then start to open it up. As we hold the pose, just continue to press that foot into the hand. Oh, I just got a little pop in my back, felt so good. Roll that shoulder, the left shoulder toward the mat. Last breath. So release the foot, press back up onto the forearm or the hands, and then we're gonna come back to downward facing dog or tabletop. Let's take a couple breaths here. So we just focused on one side of the body, the right side. Maybe you're aware of the imbalance right now or the difference between the right and the left side. And just feel into that, breathe into that. And just notice what happened when you stretched out that one side and then we'll even it out. So if we're in tabletop or child's pose, we'll just step that left foot forward. If we're in downward facing dog, feel free to extend that leg high, get a nice stretch in three-legged dog, and then bring that left leg forward. Release the right knee to the floor, and then heel toe the left foot out to the outer edge of the mat. We're gonna bring the foot to 45 degrees, so toes are gonna face slightly out. And back toes tucked under or flat to the floor. Right hand stays on the floor. You can take that left hand to the left knee and roll onto the outer edge of the left foot. Take a nice twist here. Press that knee open. And again, feel free to experiment and play around in the posture. So I didn't cue it on the other side, but maybe you found it yourself. You can always come a little bit deeper onto the forearms or forehead to the floor. You can come deeper into the twist, looking back toward the toes. And again, if there's any discomfort in that back knee, you can pad the knee with a blanket or a towel or fold the mat under. If you're twisted, untwist, and then start to heel toe that left foot back toward center. And we're gonna work the um, hands up onto the knees. Again, if this is enough, stay here. This is a great stretch for the right hip. If you want a little bit more, take both hands onto the left knee. We'll interlace the fingers, palms face down, press the hands into the knee. And ultimately, we're working those hips up over the shoulder. But again, this is a deep stretch, so we're working in that direction. If you're hinged a little bit forward, no worries. Or if your hands are on the floor, no worries. Just start to work in that direction. That's why we hold the pose. You might not see a noticeable difference, but with each breath, we're opening the body a little bit more.
Wow, again, this is it's deep. I really feel it in my body. I'm just working with the breath, trying to stay calm in the mind and the breath. And then we're gonna slowly release wherever you are. We're working that front leg into a half pigeon position. So shin's gonna come to the floor. If we're not super flexible in the hips, we can bring the heel a little bit closer in. Ultimately, for deer pose, we're working that shin toward parallel with the front of the mat. You need to listen to your body and do what's right. The side's a little bit tighter for me, so my shin's not totally parallel with the front of the mat. That's all right. We're gonna bring that right knee toward the left heel. And we're working this shin parallel with the side of the mat. We want both toes flexed back toward both knees. We're working those sitting bones onto the floor. It's a big stretch for the hip. We'll take it into a twist first, not for very long. Right hand to left knee, left hand out behind. Keep those shoulders stacked over the hips as opposed to leaning too far forward. If we do find ourselves in that position, just back off a little bit. Okay, so maybe our twist just looks like that. That's fine. And then we're gonna unwind from the twist. So our shoulders are gonna come back parallel with the front of our mat. And then we're gonna come into a forward fold. Just start to walk those hands forward. Maybe it's just here today. Maybe it's on the forearms. Maybe the forehead rests toward the hands or the mat. Hold here, breathing, inhale. Exhale. If we're folded forward, come back up onto the hands. We're gonna take it into cow face on the other side. So this time the left knee is gonna come forward. The right knee is going to work towards stacking on top of the left. So again, this might look like this for you. Heels might be close into the hips, that's great. Maybe we work the shins toward parallel with the mat. This side might be really different than the other, very normal. Left arm's gonna come up and over. You can hold on to the shirt, a strap if you have one. Right hand comes behind, you can hold on to the shirt, strap, or you can reach the fingertips toward one another and connect the hands for a bind. Only take the bind if you can keep the spine long. So if your bind looks like this, this is not good for the spine. Back off the bind. Maybe we just take that hand to the elbow. So we, we don't want to tweak out the neck or do anything weird in the spine. We want a nice tall spine. Wherever we are, hold here, nice and lifted, breathe. If you're looking to get a little bit deeper into the hips, feel free to forward fold. Otherwise, stay upright. For for it folded forward, release from the fold, release the arms, then we'll just counter pose and open up the hips and the front side of the body by taking the right knee to the left heel. Left hand's gonna be behind the left hip, 
We're gonna reach, open the hips, open all the way through the front side of the body, up into the chest. Maybe if it's okay on the neck, we gently release the head back, opening through the throat. And slowly release. All right, this time instead of the seated forward fold, we're gonna take Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose, bring the soles of the feet together, bring the hands around the ankles, sit up nice and tall, and then we're gonna start hinging forward at the hips. So we're gonna bring the elbows toward the knees, reach the crown of the head forward. release from the fold and this time we're going to extend the legs forward and come onto the left forearm so we're going to cross the right leg over the left and we're going to bend a little ant crawling on me big ant crawling on me we're going to bend that left leg the leg that's underneath and take hold of the foot with the right hand I'm gonna to start to pull that foot, and press the foot into the hand, and start to extend it back. And start to extend this front leg or the top leg long. And then if this feels accessible, start coming down onto the back. Maybe that right shoulder releases to the floor, back of the head to the floor. And if this is a nice, comfortable position, start to increase that kick of the foot a little bit more, pressing it further back, pressing that right shoulder to the floor, and breathing here. and release. Roll back onto the stomach and then press back to child's pose. All right, so we're gonna work into frog pose. Really deep hip opener. If you have any low back or hip issues, I recommend holding child's pose instead, again, if that's comfortable. Um, if you have knee issues, this pose is, or sensitive knees, not knee issues, but sensitive knees, this pose is still accept accessible. If you fold over your mat, a little extra padding, or find a blanket for each knee. All right, so we're coming from a child's pose. We're gonna come all the way back up and then start to parallel the legs. From here, you're gonna bring your toes to point out. And that might mean walking the knees a little bit further out. We want the inside edges of the feet flat to the floor. And we want the legs parallel with the sides of our mat. You're gonna feel a nice inner thigh stretch and stretch in the hips, big stretch in the hips. So maybe this is where we stay, or we can come down onto the forearms. Or if you're feeling really open in the hips, inner thighs, pelvis, you can start to come all the way down. So 
So I'm not demonstrating it here because I'm not as flexible in this position, but you can continue to walk the knees out and come into essentially like a, a straddle splits position. And as you walk the knees out, we want to keep the shins parallel to the sides of the mat or to one another. So walk the knees out, then walk the feet out. And so we have these nice 90 degree angles right here in the feet, the knees. And this is when you've got to breathe. It's a pretty intense stretch. And again, feel free to find movement here. So maybe you shift the hips back or forward. And just explore. Last breath. That's all, about all I can take in this pose. So getting out of it is a little tricky. Kind of come back toward in the direction of a child's pose. Oh, oh, creaky, creaky, creaky. Holy cow. All right, and then just bring those knees and feet together. Sit back, hips to heels. I'm just going to wiggle it out. Good. All right, so let's come down onto our backs. All right, let's take um, one twist here that uses a little bit of core strength so we get to engage our core. You're going to take full belly twisting pose. Bring your legs up towards straight. If they're bent, that's fine. Bring your legs up towards straight. So we're engaging the quads. Arms are going to come out to the side. Palms are going to face down. If you want to take half belly twisting pose, if this is too much, feels really uncomfortable, bring the legs to 90 degrees. Okay, for full belly twisting or half belly twisting pose, Press into the palms of the hands and then very slowly with control, we're building a little strength in the core. We're gonna bring those legs off to the right. Slow, slow, slow. Yeah, that's pretty challenging to go at that pace. All right, so again, legs are bent or they're straight. If you have straight legs and wanna bind, start to reach the right hand toward the left foot. Maybe both feet take a hold of the foot. And then start to look the head or the gaze to the left. So we'll come toward the left ear. Really big twist. Whether legs are bent or straight or, or the hand is bound or not. The most important thing in belly twisting posture is that you're breathing into the belly. Okay, so not the chest, but the belly. So inhale, you'll expand the belly, and exhale, you'll draw the belly button back toward the spine, contract the core. It's just a little massage for your internal organs, stimulate circulation and movement. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. A 
Re-engage through your legs. Press that left shoulder to the floor. And then if you're bound, release the bind. Legs bent or straight. Press into the palms of the hands. Straight legs, this is really challenging. Start to slowly lift the legs back up towards center and just as slowly release them to the opposite side. Keep that right shoulder glued to the mat as long as you can. Oh, they came down a little quicker on this side. <laughs> All right, so legs are at 90 or legs are straight. Arms are extended. If that's too much, goal post arms are great. You can reach that left hand toward the outer edge of the right foot if you want the bind or toward both feet or toward a toe. And then we can start to take the gaze toward the right fingertips. Keep that right shoulder gluing toward the mat. Maybe close the eyes. Inhale. Exhale. Really engage that deep belly breathing. So inhale, the belly expands. Exhale, we draw the belly button back toward the spine. Engage the core. Press the palms into the floor. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I think I need to bend my legs to 90 to lift them off the floor. And then bring the hands alongside the body. Legs are bent or straight. Slowly lower the feet toward the floor. It's your little core work for this short, deep stretch class. Let's take fish pose. So we're gonna come up onto the forearms. Elbows pull in. We're gonna to start to lift the chest, lower the crown of the head toward the floor. You feel any, anything weird happening in the neck or any tingling, just back off this pose. A beautiful heart and throat opener. And you should feel no pain in your neck. And if you're really flexible in the shoulders, which I'm not, maybe the crown of the head touches the floor. Slowly lift the head up and lower onto the back. So bring those arms off to the side. Let's hug the knees into the chest. Hands around the knees. Reach opposite hand toward wrist, opposite hand toward elbow. And then we're going to actually bring the forehead toward the knees. A little stretch here in the neck. Hug it in nice and tight. Release the head back toward the floor. And release the legs long onto the mat for Shavasana. And let the feet fall open. 
and let the arms rest alongside the body, palms face up. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Close the lips and start to slowly release the breath. So we just come back to the natural rhythm. Inhale and exhale through the nose. If that feels forced, you can even part the lips, drawing the breath in through the mouth. Just whatever's comfortable and easy. No force or effort. And bring your awareness to your toes. And wiggle the toes. That helps bring your awareness there and just release any tension you're holding on to and then relax the toes. Bring your awareness to your feet and ankles. Again, if you need to find movement to bring your awareness there. Release any tension and then relax the feet and the ankles. Bring your awareness to your calves, your knees, your thighs. If you need to release any tension by finding movement, feel free to do that. Otherwise, stay soft and still and then relax the legs. Bring your awareness and your attention to your hips and pelvis, low belly. You need to move around, loosen things up, release any tension, or if you don't feel comfortable, relax the hips, the pelvis, the glutes. Get soft and still, the low belly. Bring your awareness to your torso, your belly, your back, your sides. Release any tension you're holding on to and then relax the torso, the belly, the back, the sides. Get soft and still. Bring your awareness to your chest. Feel the lungs filling up on your inhale, releasing all of their air on your exhale. And let your chest melt into the floor. Let the back side, your upper back, Melt, relax, shoulders soften. And bring your awareness and your attention to your fingers. If you need to wiggle the fingers to release any tension, feel free to do that and then relax and find stillness. Bring your awareness to your hands and your wrists. And get soft. Relax. Bring your awareness and your attention to your forearms, your elbows, and your upper arms. Relax. And get soft and get heavy in your arms. Bring your awareness to your shoulders and your neck and your throat. We need to find movement, release any tension, and then get soft. Find stillness, melt into the floor. Bring your awareness to your jaw your tongue, your teeth. Make 
and you find some movement, roll around the jaw, and then relax the jaw, let the tongue be soft, let the lips part or close. Bring your awareness to your cheek, and your ears, your nose. Get soft, fully relaxed. And then check in if you're holding any tension in your forehead, your brow. and soften through the eyebrows, your third eye center, your forehead, all the way up to the crown of the head. Just let your head, your whole head melt into the mat. Find complete stillness and softness in the body. Hopefully you're enjoying a total state of relaxation. If you are, I invite you to stay in your Shavasana as long as you can. When you come out of it, come out slowly, rolling first onto the side and supporting yourself as you come up to a seat. Today as you go forward, may you have peace in your thoughts and your words and your heart. Namaste.